Our eyes come in all shapes and sizes, and sometimes they can impact our vision. On this episode of OcuTalk, we'll be talking with Dr. Harbir Cyan about myopia, or nearsightedness, and current management techniques for slowing myopia progression. Dr. Cyan? I want to talk to you. Not now, later. No, now. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for a brand new episode of OcuTalk. My name's Nick, and today we have a very special guest joining us. From High Street Eye Care Center in Abbotsford, British Columbia, Canada, and the host and creator of the 2020 podcast, Dr. Harbir Cyan. Dr. Cyan, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you, Nick. It's my pleasure, honestly. I'm, I'm very happy to be here. Thank you. Well, we're again, thank you very much for joining us and we, we do appreciate it here as well. Uh, before we get started, Doctor, I was hoping that maybe you can explain your background and your specialty to our viewers. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, again, my name is Harbir Cyan. I'm an optometrist here. Uh, Abbotsford is just a suburb of Vancouver. So we're kind of in the Vancouver area, Vancouver, British Columbia, West Coast of Canada. Um, I, uh, we have two practices, actually, uh, High Street Eye Care that you named and Clarity Eye Care, uh, two different modalities. So we kind of dabble in a couple of different types of settings. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we'd like to offer general kind of primary eye care to as many patients as we can, but we, we really focus on two main areas a little bit more, which is uh, myopia control and uh, dry eye management as well. Well, perfect. Again, uh, thank you again for joining us here, Doctor. And uh, Dr. Cyan, um, for our discussion today, like you said, we're definitely going to be speaking about myopia and its management to our viewers. So I was actually hoping, can you explain exactly what myopia is? Yeah, absolutely. So the, the uh, I guess you could say the layman's term for myopia is nearsightedness is probably the term that most people are familiar hearing. Um, and as far as describing what the patient experiences, it means that they can't see very well far away. Um, they can generally see better up close without their correction, without their glasses or contacts. And, um, you know, the reason that uh, myopia develops actually has to do with the size of the eyeball. So it's an increase in the what we call the axial length of the front to back length of the eyeball, which increases over time that causes the myopia to develop. Uh, so, Dr. Cyan, what's involved in my myopia management? Uh, there's a few different approaches to it, but ultimately the end goal for each of the different types of treatments is to slow down that axial length, that growth of the eye. And, uh, and uh, I'll be happy to kind of go into the different options that we have, but the, ultimately that's what we're trying to do is we, we understand that the length of the eye is what causes that change in the prescription and the change in vision. Um, and, you know, there are some techniques that slow down the change in the prescription, but they don't slow down the change in the length of the eye. And ultimately the vision will rebound and, and go to a point where the prescription increases, but the treatments that slow down the increase in the size of the eye are the ones that tend to be more effective in the long term. So that's what we're usually targeting. Gotcha. Perfect. Well, thank you for that information, doctor. And Dr. Cyan, um, how effective is management in slowing the progression of myopia? Like what are the long-term like effects of, of myopia? If you can explain that to our viewers. Sure. Yeah. Well, well the long-term for myopia, and then we can touch on how, how uh, effective the treatments are, but the long-term effect of myopia, there's a few different things. You know, one is the simple thing is that you're just going to need a stronger prescription. You'll be more dependent on your glasses, the higher your prescription gets. We understand that part, you know, visually speaking, um, if you have a much higher prescription, there's a much higher chance for distortions in your vision, aberrations through your glasses because the lenses are thicker, um, those types of things. But we consider those to be kind of less serious because really that's just more optical than anything else. Uh, but with that increase in, length of the eye, that axial elongation is the term that we use for the eye. There are some other health risk factors that, that come along with it. Uh, there's an increase in risk for certain conditions like retinal detachments and retinal tears, which can cause potentially permanent vision changes and loss. Um, maculopathy, which is the macula is the central part of our eye in the back of the eye where we get our central vision. There's an increased risk of that part of the eye slowly deteriorating over time, uh, increased risk for glaucoma and other things like that in prescriptions that are higher. So patients who have higher numbers are at higher risk for those types of conditions. Awesome. Interesting information there, Dr. Cyan. Thank you very much. And uh, doctor, uh, 
can you explain your typical and I guess maybe if there is a typical like treatment protocol for so your patients with myopia? Yeah, there's a, well, one thing, Nick, I, I'm sorry, I haven't actually, I didn't answer your last question, which was like, what are the, like the kind of the different treatment options or how effective they are. Um, so we, we, we base our treatment plan kind of on a per patient basis, right? Individual basis. Uh, we don't have any kind of a, you know, a cookie cutter approach, but we, we like to, most of these patients are younger patients that we're talking about, right? So we're usually talking to their parents and uh, we like to kind of give them uh, the few options that are relevant to their child and kind of let them and help them along in deciding which one would be the best approach for them. Um, and to give you a really quick uh, overview of the different types of options, you know, one thing we're always clear to say is like, look, if you don't want to go through any of these treatment plans, we can just give you the glasses, you go ahead and we'll see you back in a little bit. But we always encourage parents to, to consider these options. And there's advanced uh, lenses that go into glasses that are shown to reduce the progression of myopia, such as the um, MyoSmart lens by Hoya. And there's a couple others coming out like that. There's soft contact lens options. Um, previously, we were fitting kids in, into multifocal lenses, which usually would have been reserved for older patients, but there's proof that those slow down progression. Um, but a company like Cooper and I believe Bosch and Law may be coming up with something in the, in the near future, but um, they have a specific lens that's designed to slow down the progression. Uh, there's something called orthokeratology or ortho K lenses. Those are hard lenses. They're made specifically for each patient. And those are lenses that you sleep in and you don't need to wear correction during the day. And those have also been shown to reduce progression. And then there's the off-label use of um, a prescription eye drop that's called atropine. And uh, in a very low dose, that's been shown also to reduce the elongation of the eye over time. And ultimately, the effectiveness, they all kind of fall, most of these fall into a similar ballpark of sort of 50 to 60% reduction in, in axial elongation over a period of time. So hypothetically, if you have a child who's a minus two, and uh, without any medication or treatment, uh, a few years from now, they become a minus four. Theoretically, if you were to put them on one of these treatment options, a few years from now, they would only go to maybe a minus three, right? They would only get half of that increase over that period of time. So we look at the, the different options and what's suitable for each child um, and each patient, and we, we go from there. Excellent information there, doctor. I appreciate that. And uh, Dr. Sayan, to kind of go off a little bit of a different topic, if you don't mind, uh, we know that you have your own brand of like uh, a, a brand of eyewear with the charitable components. And um, I was wondering if you can explain to our viewers where that inspiration actually came from. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for that question. Um, it, was a, it was a sort of a light bulb moment for me a, a, I think about five years ago uh, where I was seeing, um, you know, we'd call it disruption, you know, in our industry, which has been happening for years. But uh, I was just thinking about why somebody within our own industry, within the eye care industry, isn't trying to um, support our, our profession along and, and kind of be part of that disruption in a way so we could be kind of involved in it and control it to, to a degree versus constantly being reactive uh, to the changes that are happening. So I saw that. And then I also saw, you know, I, I volunteered on in multiple clinics, uh, global clinics and here locally in Vancouver as well to provide eye care to patients uh, you know, people who are at need and maybe low income or, or low access to care and that type of thing. So I've seen the need for support in that regard. So I kind of, those two, I, those two concepts kind of blended together where I thought, well, I want to try to make a change within my industry. And I want to try to help people on a much broader scale, people who are in need and, you know, don't get access to the care that they deserve to have. Uh, and so I kind of had that concept and I ran with it and I actually started to design my own line of eyewear and I connected with an organization that does some of that charitable work. Um, in fact, does a lot of that charitable work. And we, we came up, established a, a model of essentially like this one for one, kind of like your Tom's shoes type of model. Um, but we, I wanted to take it a step further. I didn't want to just give somebody a pair of glasses because I know that that's not, the value is not just in the glasses. It's in actually having the, the eye care. Uh, so we developed a model where every pair of glasses we sell equals a full eye exam and a pair of glasses for someone in need. Um, and that was a really a challenging, but very, very fulfilling process of starting that brand and getting it out there and, and you know, uh, building the awareness around that. Well, that's amazing. And uh, it's so great that you're giving back. So thank you for that information, doctor. And uh, doctor, what new technologies and developments are on the uh, 
eye, eye care horizon that you can tell us about when, as far as when it comes to uh, myopia and like what we should be on the lookout for? Yeah, there's there's a lot of exciting stuff. I'm I'm really kind of nerdy about this, like the techie stuff that's coming out, all the new technology. I'm always trying to trying to get on get my hands on it when I can. But um, you know, uh, through my podcast, as you mentioned, um, I've had the the good fortune of speaking to a lot of experts in different areas and tapping their you know into their um, expertise and their knowledge about what's happening, what's coming, and um, there's a lot of exciting things in both the dry eye sphere, new technologies, new diagnostic equipment. Um, in the in the realm of myopia control, a lot of companies are coming out with these new advanced lenses uh, for glasses and contact lenses, um, and you know potentially even medications, eye drops, and things like that. So it's really exciting to see that coming up. It's it's providing us with a lot of um, great options to present to our patients. You know, ultimately that's what we're here for is to help our patients and to to solve their problems. And now we have more tools in our toolkit to like offer our patients and make their lives easier. Um, outside of that, again, you know, with, with some of these other things that I'm involved in with my, my, um, I should say, I call it my brand, but it's not mine anymore because it was acquired very recently by another company. And so it's, it's very exciting to see what's happening in this other realm within our industry. Um, this company Lensbox, that acquired my eyewear brand is doing a lot of exciting things are coming up with some very cool digital technology in the realm of, uh, potentially online refractions, online, um, face mapping, more importantly, um, you know, uh, pupil distance, all these kind of things. It, it essentially is taking, um, mapping your face like a topography map and, um, designing, potentially designing eyewear based on, on your, your face shape and all these little features. So it's pretty cool stuff that's coming out in the near future. Wow, that is definitely, I, I would really like to take a look at that infra, uh, instrument myself. That seems pretty cool. I'd nerd out to it too. Uh, Doc, Dr. Cyan, uh, was there anything else that you wanted to tell our audience before uh, we left today? Yeah, uh, if, thanks, Nick. I appreciate that. The, the uh, one thing that I'm super excited about these days, um, I touched on Lensbox, but um, there's something um, that they're doing in a, you know, related to my eyewear brand and the charitable stuff that, that I've been in, involved in. Um, but we're in the process of launching. Um, I'm not sure by the time this video goes live, if it'll be, be live yet or not, but we're in the process of launching a charitable foundation called the Lensbox Foundation. And um, we have three main mandates, three main kind of targets for this foundation. Uh, one of them is to continue to do that uh, outreach kind of work, you know, providing eye care to people in need, uh, rural areas and, and you know, um, sort of distant communities and things like that who don't have access to care. But the other component, the second component that's very, very important is actually we're increasing awareness and providing resources for um, mental health um, resources. So, uh, you know, we understand that that conversation is not being had enough. There's not enough awareness around it. And there's a lot of people kind of suffering in silence. And we want to bring that out and, and offer it to our colleagues in our industry um, to have resources specific to the eye care industry. And, uh, and the third one is um, reducing the environmental impact of our industry. So we're working on some programs for recycling and things like that. Um, so that's going to be something that I'm going to be kind of heading out in the near future. So if anybody's looking to kind of make a difference in any of those realms, you know, I'd be happy to chat with them a little further. Well, that's awesome. I'll, I'll, again, I'm, I'm very happy that you're giving back. And uh, again, everybody, this is Dr. Harbir Sayan with the High Street Eye Care Center and uh, the 2020 podcast. Go check it out. Uh, Dr. Sayan, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much, Nick. My pleasure.